Good day and welcome back. Today we will start unit three on control system design. The first lecture in this unit is lecture 4-1 on root locus analysis and design. Recall that we've already discussed root locus analysis, so we're now dis discussing it in the context of designing a control system to meet certain characteristics. The objectives of today's lecture are to sketch the root locus for a control system, to determine the range of K values for a control system to be stable and identify them on a root locus. And finally, our new objective is to use design specifications and a root locus plot to determine the desired pole locations and parameter gain for a control system. In class activity one, for the following control system, sketch the root locus plot, select the minimum value of K and related poles to design for a maximum peak time of two seconds. So first, let's focus on sketching the root locus plot. So the open loop gain is K over S times S plus two times S plus four. Since there are three poles, we know that we are going to have three loci and they are going to start at zero, negative two, and negative four. And we're going to plot those on our horizontal axis, and we know that our real axis segments have to be the left, to the left of an odd number of poles and zeros. So we're going to have two real axis segments, one between zero and negative two, and then one to the left of negative two. So let's show this on our plot. Okay, here's the pole at the origin. Here's the pole at negative two. And here's the pole at negative four. So our real axis segments are here, which means this pole is going to go to negative infinity as K approaches infinity. And then we have a real axis segment between zero and negative two, which shows that these two poles are going to go towards each other and split at some point and go towards infinity. Recall that these poles all start at the gain K equals zero. So now let's find the angle for the asymptote. So theta is equal to 2K plus one times 180 degrees over alpha. And remember alpha is equal to N minus M. So that's 2K plus one times 180 degrees divided by three because we have three poles and no zeros. So our angles are 60 degrees, 180 degrees, and 300 degrees, similar to the first example we did in the last lecture. Now let's find the centroid of our asymptotes. So recall that K is equal to negative D of S over N of S, which is negative, the quantity, S cubed plus 6S squared plus 8S over 1. So the derivative of K with respect to S is equal to 3S squared plus 12S plus 8 and we set that equal to zero, and we solve for the roots, and the roots are S1 and S2 at negative 0 0.845 and negative 3.155. So this represents our two asymptotes, except we notice that negative 3.155 is not a real axis segment. So that means that these two poles come together and split at negative 0 0.845. So let's mark that on our graph. We'll put a dot here, which represents negative 0 0.845. And at that point, the two poles come together and meet and split apart and cross back over as K approaches infinity. And recall that the asymptotes 
are at positive 60 degrees, negative 60 degrees, and then the 180 represents this pole out here at negative four that goes to negative infinity. So now let's determine the value of K at the breakaway point. So we have K is equal to negative, the quantity, S cubed plus 6S squared plus 8S over 1, evaluated at S equal to negative 0 0.845, and we get that K is equal to 3.079. So that means the gain at the breakaway point is K is equal to 3.079. Now let's determine the range of the values of K for stability, stability by using the Routh Hurwitz criterion. So delta of S is equal to S cubed plus 6S squared plus 8S plus K. So here we have our rows S cubed, S squared, S to the first power and S to the zero. And on the table, we have 1, 8 and 6K. Our next row is K minus 48 over negative six. And our last row is K. So in order for the system to be stable, K must be greater than zero. And using that top equation, K minus 48 must be less than zero so K must be less than 48. So in order for the system to be stable, K must be between zero and 48. So we now know that the other crossover point when these closed loop poles go back across is right here at K equal 48. So now let's determine the gains, the closed loop poles at the gain K equal 48. Delta of S is equal to S cubed plus 6S squared plus 8S plus 48, when K is equal to 48, and the roots of the characteristic equation are plus or minus J, 2.828, and negative 6. So that means that this crossover point is J, 2.828. This crossover point down here is negative j 2.828 and there's also a point out here at negative 6 when k is equal to 48. Now let's go to MATLAB. Okay so here's our root locus plot generated in MATLAB. So our design constraints were to have a maximum peak time of two seconds with the minimum value of k. So recall that the peak time, TP, is equal to pi over omega d. And since the maximum peak time has to be less than or equal to two seconds, that means that pi over omega d is less than or equal to two seconds, or that omega d is greater than or equal to pi over 2, so omega d is greater than or equal to 1.57 radians per second. So the way that we show this on our plot is to make a horizontal line at approximately 1.57, which we're going to estimate is here. Since this is sy symmetric, that means also we would estimate it here, which means that any pole that is going to satisfy our design constraint has got to be above the 1.57 line and below the negative 1.57 line. So next what we do to design the system is one method is we can do trial and error. And I'm going to show you that method first before I show you an alternative method. So the trial and error method I select values of k until I converge on closed loop poles that satisfy my conditions. So first we already know that when k is equal to 48 
the closed loop poles are plus or minus j, 2.828, and negative 6. So this is well above 1.57, and we're looking for our minimum k. So let's say I half that and try k equals 20. When k equals 20, negative 0 0.4 and plus or minus j, 1.92. There is another pole out here, but I'm not concerned with that one because the ones that are going to satisfy this constraint are the two that are complex conjugates. So now let's try 15. If k is equal to 15, I have negative 0 0.5 plus or minus j, 1.66. Okay, still a little high. So what about 10? 10 is negative 0 0.616 plus or minus j, 1.31. And I see that that number is actually too low because it's inside of this range here. So now, let's try 14. So if I try 14, the closed loop poles are negative 0 0.522 plus or minus j, 1.597 in that other pole. So now we see that I have 1.597. So what I want to see is if there's any pole that will get me closer. So I'm now going to try 13. And 13 is negative 0 0.545 plus or minus j, 1.533. So using this method, the minimum k that designs the constraint equation is k equal 14. And so when k is equal to 14, we have poles at negative 0 0.522 plus or minus j, 1.597, and negative 4.96. So now let's look at another method to solve this problem. 